Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and this is a review for the IdeaPad Flex 3 11-inch Chromebook. Thank you to Best Buy for sending me this product for free to try. You'll receive the Chromebook, two-piece 45-watt adapter and power cord, and a quick start guide. The device measures 11 inches wide, 8 inches long, and 3 quarters of an inch thick, and weighs just over 2.5 pounds. The shell is a lightweight plastic, and there are two long rubber feet running the length of it underneath. On the right-hand side, you'll find the power button, volume adjustment, and Kensington lock slot. On its left are the USB-C charging port with status LEDs, USB 2.0 port, combo microphone headphone jack, and micro SD card slot. When plugging in and charging, the status LED will be orange and turns green when fully charged. To turn it on, open the lid and press the power button on the right hand side, and the LED on it will be white. When you start up the machine for the first time, you'll need to go through a brief setup, and you'll select whether it'll be used by an adult or child. The latter allows you to set rules around its use. This hybrid device has a touchscreen, and while it looks like a laptop, it feels more like a tablet with an attached keyboard. It'll need to be connected to the internet via Wi-Fi, since most of a Chromebook's applications operate on the cloud. The device will update itself automatically if an update is available. In the bottom left of the screen is a soft button for shut off, and in the bottom right corner are the time, battery status, Wi-Fi connection meter, and keyboard layout. Speaking of, the keyboard is a full-size 10 keyless QWERTY keyboard that is not backlit, and there is a generously large mouse pad below it. Along the top row, you have some quick function keys for forward, back, and refresh, full screen, desktop toggle, brightness controls, mute, volume, and device lock. If you want to search the device or web, just press the everything button on the keyboard to bring up the search bar. At the top of the screen is a built-in 720p 1 megapixel webcam under this sticker. There's a red cover that you can use to block the camera lens by sliding the tab over it. It also has dual stereo mics to its left and right. While the camera's image and video quality aren't the best, it works fine for video chat and virtual meetings. If you choose not to log in with a Google account, you can use the device as a guest by tapping or clicking the button in the bottom left corner. Guest activity on this device won't be saved when you log out, and you'll be restricted to using the internet browser and file explorer to access the SD card. You'll also only have access to basic settings like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. To exit guest mode, click the system tray in the bottom right, then tap Exit Guest. When signed in with a Google account, you can sync your Chromebook's settings with another device logged in using that account, so that your experience across devices is the same. The Chromebook operates like any typical Android mobile device. You can install apps from the Google Play Store, enable voice AI assistance, and even use smart device unlocking with a connected smartphone. The unit runs on Chrome OS though, and apps are found in the swipe up shelf along the bottom of the screen. The hinge for the screen rotates 360 degrees, so you can use it without the physical keyboard and even place it in tent orientation so that it acts as its own stand. The on-screen keyboard supports swipe typing with predictive word completion, so you won't need to tap each individual letter. The 11.5 inch glossy IPS screen has 10 point multi-touch support enabling you to interact with it with taps and swipes, just like a tablet. The color and contrast won't wow you though, with only 1366 by 768 resolution at 160 dpi. And while bright while viewing head-on, it dims quickly at off-viewing angles. Color accuracy is so-so, with just 45% NTSC color gamut, so it isn't a great option for creative work or photography, as things can look a little washed out. However, watching streaming video content like YouTube or Netflix is fine up to 720p quality. Plus, the built-in speakers aren't that bad and can get pretty loud, though I'd still recommend headphones for a better listening experience. Underneath the chair seat, you'll find a bag containing parts required for assembly, which you should detach and remove. Spec-wise, this model has a 64-bit ARM Cortex-A73 processor, 4GB of RAM, and 32GB of drive storage, though about 12GB of that is used by the OS and pre-installed apps. Since the internal storage space is not upgradable, the only way to get more space is to use a microSD card or save stuff to the cloud. This device likely won't be able to run resource-heavy applications like 3D design and digital studios. 
However, casual mobile games run on it just fine. The battery life is pretty decent though, at up to 10 hours on a full charge depending on your usage. As for connectivity, this device supports Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.2, so not the latest and greatest, but still decent in terms of speed and performance. Both USB ports can be used for connecting peripherals and powering external devices. Many of Google's services are simply launched within the Chrome web browser, for email, word processing, and spreadsheets. However, this means that without an internet connection, you won't be able to use any of those apps. Overall, the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 3 is a decent lightweight alternative to a full laptop. It can be used as a tablet, is its own stand, and has built-in antivirus protection through automatic OS updates. While it doesn't have the highest quality screen or fastest processor, it boots up quickly and can handle most productivity tasks and internet browsing with ease. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join me next time.